Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, welcome. We've just started letting people in. We've got quite a few people attending today, so we'll just give everyone a chance to shuffle in, but get comfortable. We'll start shortly. That's it. Right, we're up to 70. And Ooh, rising. You're fast, you're a fast lot. <laughs> um, so, um, in the meantime, if you want to let us know where you're joining us from today, we would love to know. We always get people from all over the show. So, um, so in the chat, let us know where you are uh, joining us from. Chorley, Crosby, oh, Chorley. Local to me in Chorley. Welcome, welcome. God, those numbers are creeping up fast. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of local people. Yes, good representation in Merseyside. <laughs> yes, How we like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Southport, Lytham, Bromby. Kingsley in Cheshire. Liverpool, fantastic. Great, okay, we're on 82 now. <laughs> Wow. Wow. I think we, we definitely had, I think we had 131 people joining us the last time I checked. So really, um, really great to see such a fantastic turnout. Yeah, maybe we'll have some people uh, joining us shortly. Wow. All these people are very prompt. <laughs> Bridport, Dorset. Yeah, I told you, from all over the shop. <laughs> Kim from Colm. Right, so I suspect that numbers will keep creeping up, um, but I think let's get started. Let's get started. So um, I'm gonna, just going to start with some very quick housekeeping. So my name's Ellie, I'm a communications officer at the Wildlife Trust for Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside. What a mouthful. Um, so today in this webinar, we cannot see you and you are muted. So that's good to know. Don't worry about any background noise your end. Um, if you want to chat to us, you can use the, the chat function, which you have been using. Um, and if you have any specific questions, because we will have time at the end, for um, a quick Q&A. If you have any specific questions that you want to get answered um, in the 10 minutes at the end, then if you could please drop them in the Q&A chat and that just stops them getting lost in all of the other chat going on. But please do feel free to use the chat just to kind of say hello and, and chat to one another as well. This session is being recorded um, and that is so that it can be made available on our YouTube channel after the event finishes. So don't worry if you have to leave halfway through um, and you want to catch up with the rest of it, it will be made available on our YouTube channel um, this week. Um, and I think, I think that is it from me. So I will hand over now to Victoria. Thank you, Ellie. Yes, so my name is Victoria. Uh, I'm the marketing manager for Lancashire Wildlife Trust. I've worked for the Lancashire Wildlife Trust for nearly 12 years um, this year, which is a bit scary. Um, but thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, it's lovely to see that some of our, our, our volunteers and some of our members um, have also joined us. So um, thank you. Thank you to you guys, especially for, um, for your support at this time. For those of you that are less familiar with Lancashire Wildlife Trust, we are a nature conservation charity. We look after over 50 wildlife sites across Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside, from Brockholes in Preston over to Mearsands Wood in Rufford in West Lancashire, um, big, big parts of the um, peatlands in Manchester. On the coast, we look after some sand dunes um, over on the Fylde coast and right up to Wharton Crag um, in Silverdale in um, North Lancashire, we also look after. 
including obviously as well um, Lump Meadows um, that we'll be finding out about more tonight. So part of our work is also about connecting people with nature and really encouraging others to care about the natural world so that we can protect it. Over the last year, nature has been a lifeline for many people, myself included. Um, going out, spending time in nature um, has, has really, really helped to get me through the last year. And we know that spending time in nature does have an impact on our, on our well-being. And unfortunately, um, we've not been able to really sort of connect with people face to face over the last year like we normally would be doing. Um, Cheryl and, and Molly would be, would be um, you know, running all sorts of different events, in-person events. Um, so that's why we've we've really been trying to um, run some digital events at the moment to help you all sort of stay connected to nature um, and inspire you to discover your your own sort of local wild places. We rely on our donors and members to do the work that we do for wildlife in our region. If you feel able, please consider making a donation tonight to support our work for wildlife. You can text to donate tonight and you'll see the number on some of the slides as we move through the event. Um, and there's also some more information on our website about um, perhaps becoming a member, if that were, was something that you, that you might be interested in. So before I hand over to Molly and Cheryl, I'm just going to um, ask you all to answer a little question that we've got in our poll, um, which is, have you ever visited Lunt Meadows? So hopefully you should be able to see that there. And we've not had any I can't remember, so that's good. We can remember where we've been. <laughs> I always add that, that in because I can never remember where I've been. <laughs> Is that for you? Is that for you, Ellie? That's just for me to click. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty much everybody. Okay, so lots of people have visited wow. the Meadows already. Lots and lots of people, which is great. Um, but some people haven't yet. So, so you need to persuade them tonight to come and visit <laughs> when it's open. <laughs> right, okay. I shall now hand over to uh, Molly and Cheryl to talk to you all about the very special Lump Meadows. Hello. Oh. You're Hello, on. Cheryl. <laughs> Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, I'm having quite a lot of difficulty with my internet tonight. This is being in East Lancashire, you see the internet connection. I don't know. It's rubbish for me tonight anyway. So um, what I might do is actually sharing that might just improve the sound. OK, so I'll stop my video and then I shall try. You'll have slides to look at anyway. <laughs> Oh. So you'll have some information to look at. So it was uh, lovely seeing you, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and come back later. <laughs> See you later. Okay. So um, we have a PowerPoint to show you tonight. Um, and I, I think I know probably most people that are on here tonight. There's there's some but just so that you know who Molly and I are, I'm Cheryl Ashton. I'm the project Lump Meadows Nature Reserve, um, and I'm managing the Mesolithic and Modern Life, showcasing the past, present, and future project. So this is our exciting project that will be taking place over the next five years. So this project aims to present Lump Meadows, and the extended community and it will give them an understanding of how humans have interacted with the landscape over thousands of years, how landscape changes affect human lives and how the choices that we've made influence our future. Um, the project supported by National Lottery Heritage Fund. As I've said, it's a five year long partnership between Lancashire Wildlife Trust, the Museum of Liverpool, Sir Optimist International at Crosby, and the Department of History and Archaeology from the University of Chester. And we're thrilled to be working with local organisations to share heritage knowledge with visually in terms of nature reserves. So through the project, the Wildlife Trust and our partners will offer a varied events programme that will enrich school groups and visitors 
relating to wildlife, but also relating to the landscape and prehistoric history at Lunt. On top of all of this, we'll be improving signage, paths and screens around the site and building a new this welcome centre. Um, and it, that will also double up as a volunteer base. It will provide an indoor classroom for events and activities, visitor toilets and a staff office. Um, if you visited Lunt already, you know how open, how windy, chilly or hot on the opposite end of the scale it can be. Um, so I think probably the next thing to do is is, is let you have a little bit of information from our partners really. Um, Molly has um, actually recorded some footage from our partners and I think she's going to play this now. Yeah. Um, so also just to introduce myself, my name is Molly Toll and I'm the Communications and Engagement Officer for Lunt. Um, so my job is to promote the project and to promote Lunt um, and also I'll be in charge of organising events um, in the community and at Lunt as well. So very excited to start doing that. Right, so here is a video from all of our partners, um, minus the Museum of Liverpool, but Ron from the Museum of Liverpool is featured in photos later on. Hi everyone, my name's Rob, Rob Ide. I work for the operations team at the Environment Agency and have done for nearly 20 years. I've been involved in Lunt Meadows since the start, back in 2010-11, when we first identified it as a likely site for uh, a flood storage area. And then over the sort of three or four years, around 2011-ish, um, constructing the infrastructure as part of the uh, flood storage and, and nature reserve that we've developed the site into, uh, along with the Wildlife Trust. And yeah, continue to be involved. Exciting times at the minute with the breach repairs, helicopters, floating diggers, and um, yeah, a lot of work involved in pushing Lunt forward and looking forward to yeah, exciting times ahead. Hi, my name's Sue Slamman. I'm the Environment Agency Technical Biodiversity Officer covering the Lunt Meadows site as part of the wider Alt Crossings Douglas catchment. Uh, I've been in the role since 2011, uh, taken over from Lindsay Ward, who previously had that role and um, lobbied area management to buy Lump Meadows when it came up for sale in the noughties. Um, the biodiversity officer role is to advise the wider business uh, with regards to how we might deliver on biodiversity outcomes uh, and uh, achieve multiple benefits through flood and coastal risk management schemes. As I say, I've sat on the steering group since 2012 uh, and um, helped to work through uh, some of the snags around uh, post-construction and um, collaborating with the Wildlife Trust to work through any issues that arise. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next phase uh, implementation of the HLF uh, project. Um, it's challenging location and uh, uh, although the site is fantastic already, um, there's uh, more we can do here to um, um, build on what we've got uh, and rise to the challenges of uh, climate change. Um, so yeah, a brilliant site, massive EA, uh, asset uh, and a great partnership uh, working. So Optimist International is a worldwide, a women's global voluntary movement and the ne network is in 121 countries and operates at a local, national and international level to educate, empower and enable opportunities for women and girls. Sir Optimus projects work toward ending poverty, eradicating hunger, providing education to all, and preserving the environment. Well, it was by a chance email that Fiona Whitfield sent to us. Um, I think towards the end of 2018, um, telling us about, um, she gives a brief um, 
picture of the of the reserve uh, explained its proximity to the two villages and um, offering us the, the opportunity of getting involved with the project and uh, we met Donna, Cheryl and Jules at the time and uh, we spent a lot of time chatting to them and um, consequently we formed a partnership later in the year after many many more meetings. We're which, chairing, which we've got a that provided a voluntary chair for the project's committee meetings and um, she takes receipts of the quarterly reports from the pro project, project staff, partners and consultants to ensure that everything is effective and timely. There's volunteer support, um, we, li we liaise with a communications and education officer to develop communications for press release and social media updates. and. Um, assist in external fundraise bids to support activities during the delivery stage um, which we've done uh, and these will all be recorded as in-kind hours which support, support the project. I know that some members are looking forward to the wildlife side of it, others are really intrigued by the archaeology side of it but I think for me um, it's got to be the building of the Welcome Centre because this will give the focus for the whole project um, and it'll bring the site together and hopefully encourage more visitors to use the reserve and get to know it as we have done over the last two years and are growing to love it more and more. Hi my name's Amy Gray Jones and this is Barry Taylor and we're both lecturers in archaeology at the University of Chester. We both specialise uh, in the Mesolithic. I'm a human osteologist, um, so I deal with the analysis of human remains. So I'm really interested in burial practices uh, in the Mesolithic of Northwest Europe. Uh, and I'm an environmental archaeologist, so I study uh, sort of the environment in the past, but particularly how Mesolithic people sort of uh, perceived and understood the natural world. Um, we got involved in the project in 2017 after we visited Ron's excavations at Lunt Meadows. Um, we've been excavating some sites that are roughly the same age as the ones at Lunt, so it was really great to see uh, such an amazing site that's just up the road from where we're based. Um, and we worked with Cheryl on the pilot stage of the project. Our main role was to run the Stone Age experience workshops on the reserve. And that's where we taught people about Mesolithic life by getting them involved in some Stone Age crafts. So things like uh, making cord from plant materials, building fish traps and making arrowheads. Uh, and these were great fun to do, really good activities and everyone that took part seemed to enjoy them. Um, we're really excited now the project's starting. Um, like so many people, we've been stuck inside for almost a year now. Uh, a lot of our teaching's been online. Uh, and so we're really looking forward to being able to be outside again, meet people face to face rather than across a computer screen, and teach people about the wonder that is the Mesolithic. We've really got some good, great new activities we want to try out with you. Um, we're currently designing a Stone Age fishing technology workshop where we'll be showing people how to make fishing nets um, and hooks and lines out of the plants that you can find on the reserve. And we've just finished another new workshop. In this one we'll be showing people how to make uh, arrowheads from red deer antler and then hafting those onto arrows. Um, we also got a few surprises as well, but you'll only find out uh, about those if you come along and take part. Um, there's some exciting stuff we need to do before this. So we need to try out our new workshops with our students to make sure everything works. Uh, and there's quite a few replica tools that we need to sort of make and then test. But obviously the thing that we're looking forward to most of all is being back at Lump Meadows. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how the project develops and particularly uh, thinking about um, looking at how the visitor centre and the teaching spaces sort of develop the site. I think these will really uh, add to the experience that you get when you uh, visit the site. So thanks very much for listening. Okay, and I'll go back to the presentation now. All right, yeah, so um, to really explain where the project came from, you know, we need to go back in time and explain um, what Lump Meadows is and how it was created. Um, so Lump wasn't always a nature reserve. Um, so it, it, but it is now, it, originally it was farmland beforehand um, in the early 2000s, um, 
but now it's a 67 hectare wetland site. Um, it's just north of Liverpool in Sefton, um, between the villages of Lunt and Home Green. Um, and it sits along the River Alt as well. Um, it's owned by the Environment Agency, um, but it's managed as a nature reserve under a long term lease by Lancashire Wildlife Trust. Um, now, Lancashire Wildlife Trust first became involved in the site in 2012 uh, when the Environment Agency um, acquired the land um, to develop a flood alleviation reservoir and its sustainable urban drainage scheme. Um, and this was it was chosen in this location because the river Alt had previously breached its banks here in the past. Um, so to achieve this aim, here's a photo of it from Google Maps. Um, to achieve this aim, you know, they had to do a lot of re-landscaping. Um, it was a really large scale scheme of wetland habitat um, creation. Um, so they've created an area with substantial areas of wet grassland, open water, reed beds and scrapes. Um, for those of you who've never heard of scrapes before, um, the areas of shallow water um, with little slopes in them. And they're really good for wading beds, really good for invertebrates, um, especially during the breeding season, uh, because there's lots of food for chicks there. Um, so the Environment Agency, they remodeled the land and to make it um, a sustainable urban drainage scheme. And what they did was, if you can see here on the screen, this path, what looks like a path, but it's, it's a spillway. Um, so that when the river alts water levels get too high, they then pour over into the reserve and the water is then stored in the reserve. Um, and it's either taken up by the plants or into the soil, um, it evaporates into the atmosphere, um, or it's very slowly released back into the river alt. And that puts, um, the, takes the pressure off the, any drains um, and helps um, alleviate any flooding in more built up urban areas. Um, so Lung was officially open to the public as a nature reserve in 2015. Um, so it's only a very young site, but nevertheless, it is absolutely amazing for wildlife. Um, it's home to regionally and nationally significant populations of some species. Um, and in the spring and summer months, um, the site supports vast numbers of breeding wages, um, including lapwings. You see a picture of one there with its chicks. Um, as well as butterflies and dragonflies. Um, and we've also recorded 15 different species of birds of prey, um, including barn owls, short eared owls, and marsh harriers. Um, Lunt is very well known for its owls. No, they're not shy. Um, but so, as well as being a nature reserve and a flood management tool, um, what makes the site even more unique is its link with the Mesolithic period. So, the Mesolithic period um, is the Middle Stone Age. And in Britain, this was around 11,300 years ago to about 6,000 years ago, um, when the Environment Agency were developing the site and they commissioned and funded archaeological excavations from the Museum of Liverpool. Um, and during the excavations, the curator of prehistoric archaeology um, at the Museum of Liverpool, Ron Cowell, he suspected that there might be evidence of some Mesolithic settlements. Um, so he said to the Environment Agency, he was like, we should just dig a little bit deeper and see what we can find. Um, and lo and behold, there was, he found 6,000 artifacts, um, like these little flint pieces here, um, which would have been used for tools and sorts of things. And then he also found evidence of settlements, so people had actually been living there. Um, so the whole excavation should have taken eight weeks. But Ron is still actually doing it now. Um, so it's an amazing resource. And he dated um, the finds as far back as 9,000 years. Um, so it's a really rare and nationally important settlement. Um, and so here's Ron here working around the dig. Um, it's now actually a visitor feature in the site in itself. Um, so if you come to Lund, you can see it. Um, and interesting as well because the wetland habitat is quite similar to what it would have been like 9,000 years ago as well. So you sort of see in a very similar uh, landscape. So that's Lund really. It's a, it's a mixture of wildlife, water management and archaeology. Um, and each of these factors are equally interesting on their own, 
but combined together they've given us this really unique opportunity um, to teach people um, about the history um, both naturally and culturally and the changes at Lund um, over the past and at the present and into the future as well. Cheryl? Thank you, thank you. Um, so the slide that you can see on the screen at the moment is a visitor survey uh, that was carried out in 2017. So it revealed that what people love about Lund the most is its wildlife and its underdeveloped state. Um, respondents to this survey also viewed it as a key place for learning about the natural world and archeology. span And people wanted opportunity to learn more about these things. So whilst people loved how underdeveloped it was, there was a desire for some basic facilities on site, in particular, toilets, shelter, and better viewing screens. So despite people loving the wilderness, we do actually still all want a few home comforts. After the visitor survey, the team spent two years consulting and researching to find out if there was a need or a want for a project at Lunt. This really backed up the findings of the visitor survey. The main thing people were drawn to at Lunt was the wildlife and understanding more about the species here, how the site works in terms of its water management and the archeology span and being able to tell people that would deepen the enjoyment of the site. So as a result, we have the Mesolithic and Modern Life Project. And through the project, we'll instigate major changes to Lump Meadows that will enable the reserve to share its unique combination of wildlife, archaeology and water management with even more people and in newer ways, newer and different ways. So um, how are we going to do that? OK, so. First off will be improving the infrastructure already on site and bringing some new bits of infrastructure in. In autumn of this year, I'm keeping my fingers crossed when I'm saying this, in autumn of this year, 2021, um, we'll be installing a new welcome centre and volunteer base on the reserve. Um, as already mentioned, the visitor survey in 2017 showed that shelter toilets and better viewing screens were the most requested improvements from respondents. So we hope that we are will be able to meet all of those. You may have seen over the past year or so, our volunteers have been working on installing and building a compost toilet at Lund. We've made so we've made a start really on improving those home comforts. While we're developing the project and running pilot events, we had to cancel and rearrange several events because of the poor weather. Um, and, the mass, and the main negative feedback at those events that we did successfully run was that the people were cold on site. Um, yes, I'm sorry if you've taken part in the development stage. I'll apologize now if we froze you to death at some point trying out our activities. Um, we've had such a mix of weather on site, we've had high winds, we've had thunderstorms, heavy rain and temperatures so hot that they actually caused ill health. So you can see that it was sort of, you know, climate change readily there in action, really. We've had such extremes. Um, so we really did see that there was a need for shelter and we realised without the development of the building, we wouldn't be able to sustain a programme of events, really teaching people about the site's heritage. Um, and to be consistent in what we can offer, we need shelter. One of the main components of survival and what Mesolithic life has shown us on site as well, people needed shelter. So in the centre, will be a volunteer space, an office space for staff, a classroom for events and activities when the weather's poor, because really we want to keep people out on site as much as possible. It's a lovely location and a fantastic atmosphere as well to be out on site, but at least we'll have that back up for bad weather. Um, we'll have space for volunteers and a staff office and um, 
we're hoping that because we'll be there more often, the increased presence on site will be, be better able to monitor the well-being of the wildlife, which can sometimes be an issue, and of visitors as, to the site as well. When we do run events, we'll still be outdoors as much as possible, as I've said, because we want to give you that genuine sort of experience. But the centre just gives us a backup plan if we need it. The building is going to be a single storey off grid wooden cabin constructed by rural accommodations. Some of you may have seen similar buildings to what we're going to build at Martin Mir. They're the same company that did the ones at Martin Mir. Um, but this is obviously a lot smaller. The centre will be near the entrance to the site. And as you can see on the map, uh, mm. the building will be facing sideways to Lunt Road. We chose this location because it's outside of the flood risk area. And if the site were to experience a one in 1000 year flood event, not too dissimilar to what we've just had, um, being positioned here, when you drive past on the Lunt Road, you'll see less of a surface area of the building as well. So it will be a little bit more disguised. Um, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully and with sort of the proof of the pudding is uh what's just happened the the flooding that actually happened over the last uh, month or so has actually proved that our building will be out of the footprint of the water so we're quite happy of that um the next two pictures this one that's on the screen um and the next one are actually pictures from a visual impact assessment that we had to provide as part of the planning application uh, Sefton Council have a designation in the in um, Sefton Village, Lunt Village and Homer Green for openness in the area. It's a special designation, which means any new building or any extensions can't break the skyline. So we need the building to blend in with its surroundings. So you can just see on that picture that the building has actually been put into there, but hopefully because of the trees in the background, and of the vegetation around the edge, it's quite disguised. So it'll be sitting in the sh shadow of a shelter belt of trees with uh, a field next to it. And these will screen it, but we do intend to screen it further with willow panels by planting hedges. And we're gonna dig more ditches and plant reeds so that the reeds will screen it as well. These reeds will be along the south and southeast side of the building. So the outside of the building is going to be the same or similar colour to the reeds that are there now. So um, the building will be even more obscured from a distance and hopefully, well, we hope, blend in with the surroundings. If for any reason there's anybody that is uh, on, on the chat tonight and on the webinar tonight and they want to contact us because they're worried about the building or anything it's obviously received positive planning permission now but you can contact us please do contact us don't just worry about things because we'd like to talk to you and um, try and uh, sort any problems out um, the building will have full disabled access to it throughout and the National Heritage Lottery Fund grant means we can introduce disabled access across the nature reserve as well um, for the first time. Paths around the site will be upgraded and if you're a regular visitor you will know we have some very, very muddy paths. You have to be a wader really to be a visitor on site. Um, so. The, up, the upgrades will include making a fully accessible hide for the first time too, um, changing gates, which you can see the kissing gate at the top of the um, screen there. That isn't actually um, DDA compliant at the moment. So we'll put those things right and we'll make sure everybody can get all over the reserve uh, as they need to. Uh, we'll be upgrading the car park too and the track. Um, and this was only ever intended, the surface that's down was only ever intended to be temporary um, for EA to do works that were happening on site. Um, and the potholes develop really, really quickly. Um, it's still a single, it'll still be a single track, but it'll be designed to give better access for um, things like, we hope we don't need them, but say we need an emergency vehicle or something. The existing track was laid about eight years ago um, and 
people do comment on it and it tends to pothole where the traffic is breaking it where where traffic is breaking and where it's turning corners and so we hope that you'll bear with us with that because it will be being improved molly yeah um so we're also planning on um deepening people's understanding of the site and um, by improving interpretation um so we have got some interpretation panels in the site already um but we would like to update these um and present lund story and heritage in different ways as well you know um through online blogs and uh, using videos we're going to produce a leaflet um, and have an information points around the, the reserve um through exhibitions um and also we will have real and replica artifacts in the welcome center um for people to see and feel for themselves um Elsewhere on the site, we're also going to develop an outdoor education area. Um, so with the archaeology site in particular, you know, we recognise that we've got an amazing opportunity to develop a really unique um, visitor learning experience. Um, and we can bring the Stone Age to life in an environment that would have been really similar to the one that the people at Lund lived in during the Mesolithic. Um, so with support from the Museum of Liverpool and the University of Chester, um, we're going to reconstruct the Mesolithic house, um, which is like this one here with all the grass and the reeds and things, um, as well as an outdoor classroom. Um, and in the outdoor classroom, we'll facilitate activities like shelter building, green woodworking, natural art and fire lighting. Um, you know, we really believe that activities like this are key for explaining um, history and archaeology um, to visitors, um, especially children and young people. Um, and we hope that by letting people have a go themselves at some of these activities and seeing a Mesolithic style house in person, um, you know, people will feel that connection with the hunter gatherers um, who lived here. Um, we are going to be offering um, these the school visits, um, and so with that, we will be employing a learning officer um, to deliver these educational workshops and activities with schools. Um, but they're not just going to be um, Mesolithic themed. You know, we're going to have themes ranging from archaeology to ecotherapy um, through to wildlife and hydrology as well. Um, and also to give teachers more support with the Stone Age subject, um, the University of Chester, very kindly, um, they're going to be developing and running continuing professional development sessions for Key Stage 1 and 2 teachers. Um, because we did find in the development stage that a lot of teachers said that they struggled to find age appropriate resources. Um, but it's not just school groups that we want to engage, you know, we want to persuade all of our visitors to see Lunt as more than just a place to go for a walk, you know, we really want people to feel connected to the site's nature, you know, the Mesolithic and the water management and really reflect on their like individual environmental impact. Um, and we know how people want to engage with Lump Meadows. And we know that current users don't want change that will damage the wildlife and the peace that they already enjoy at the reserve. Um, so after lots and lots of consultation and research, we've developed a varied events programme that we hope will encourage deeper appreciation and understanding of the reserve um, among new and existing visitors. Um, so types of events we'll be running will include plant and wildlife workshops, walks and talks, um, such as wildflower identification, moth trapping, medicinal plant walks, animal tracking, small mammal surveys or bird walks. You know, we're really going to look at a range of species. Um, we're also going to offer stargazing walks and opportunities to go owl watching with an experienced guide. Um, on top of that, we'd also like to provide opportunities to access health and wellbeing activities that relate to the five ways of wellbeing. Um, you know, a lot of the activities we'll be running anyway do fit in with these themes. Um, but on top of that, we were thinking of we could run some very small activities that won't disturb the wildlife or other site users, such as Tai Chi, yoga and guided walks. Um, and we know that there are a lot of dog walkers who use Lump Meadows. A lot of them come every day. Um, so we would like to run events aimed at them as well um, and deepening their understanding of the reserve too. Um, I'm very excited about this bit. Um, working with the Museum of Liverpool and the University of Chester, um, we're going to build on the archaeology activities um, piloted in the development stage too. 
Um, so we're going to offer archaeological workshops um, associated with the finds and the research around the site. Um, and this will include activities like field walking, um, mesolithic finds retrieval and recording. Um, the University of Chester are also going to deliver a series of workshops on archaeological buried landscape survey techniques. Um, and we know that the Stone Age experience workshops that the University of Chester led in the pilot stage um, were very popular. So we are going to offer these again, as Amy and Barry said in their video. Um, and in these workshops, participants can learn how to make everyday usable objects um, as they were made in the Stone Age. Um, so the examples in this picture, people have been making arrowheads, they've been making containers and be making um, cordage. And all of these things, the Mesolithic people would have had to have made from scratch using natural resources around them. Um, the University of Chester staff are also going to train volunteers and staff to deliver these sessions um, so that we and our volunteers can also run these sessions for the public, um, which is very exciting and very kind of them. Um, and it makes this programme more sustainable in the long run as well. Um, additionally, the Museum of Liverpool, Liverpool um, are going to give a series of guided walks, talks and tours of the archaeological site um, and its surrounding prehistoric landscape. Um, and they'll also be training staff and volunteers how to use a teaching collection of finds illustrating Stone Age life at Lund. Okay. And of course, um, these events will all be open to local people and to anyone in specialist interest groups. Um, we really want local people to love the reserve, as many already do. Um, we'd love to engage with them and we hope that we can enable um, local people to understand more about the wildlife and the archaeology and the water management on site. Um, in particular, you know, we would really like to reach young people who live locally um, by creating a wildlife watch group. Um, so for those who've never heard of Wildlife Watch, it's a group that meets regularly for youngsters to explore the surroundings and share some experiences with other children. Um, this can be through playing games, dead walking, um, carrying out wildlife related tasks like building book hotels, things like that. Um, and we'd also like to offer the classroom space for others to use too. You know, it's not just for the Wildlife Trust to use. Um, our partners can use it for events or exhibitions, classes, meetings, um, as can any local community groups or special interest groups as well. You know, we would really like it to be a resource for the community. Okay. Cheryl, are you with us? I am, yes, yeah. Um, the wildlife. Okay, so... Um, with so much new activity and opportunity on site, we want to stress that we do not want developments and events to be at the expense of nature conservation efforts on site. Uh, we want to continue to make the habitats at Lunt Meadows brilliant for wildlife. We know that the wildlife at Lunt Meadows wild, we know that the wildlife and Lunt Meadows wild character is what makes the site so appealing to so many. So we certainly don't want to lose that. That would be a little bit like killing the golden goose, wouldn't it? Um, our reserve officer and conservation volunteers will continue to survey and monitor habitats and species to ensure that the site is increasing in value for wildlife through appropriate surveying and monitoring, training, and of course some mapping too. Um, by upgrading the bird hide and viewing screens too, we'll provide more privacy to the wildlife, but that can that will be explained a little bit more in our wildlife talk uh, on the 10th of March. So the vision for Lunt Meadows is to continue to develop the site as a regionally significant wetland and nature reserve um, with a variety of wetland habitats. This includes 24 hectares of reed bed to create the largest reed bed in Merseyside and 24 hectares of marshy grassland. Additional habitats will include wet ditches, dry species rich grassland, 10 ponds and 1,500 linear metres of hedgerow, scrub and bramble too. Um, there's a lot more information that will be in our wildlife talk and you can hear about the wildlife in detail um, at the talk by Adam Graham on the 10th of March. Mm -hmm. Molly? Yeah, um, so 
Yeah, as you can see, it's a massive project. Um, so we're really going to need help from volunteers with this. <laughs> um, so it's been a joint effort between staff and volunteers to for Lund to reach the position it's in now. And we really wouldn't be where we were without the volunteer help. Um, but now we've got so many new ways for getting involved as well. Um, so there's opportunities for those who wish to work in the Welcome Centre, meeting and greeting people, um, doing building and site maintenance, um, doing education visits with schools, um, or helping with wildlife events, helping with wildlife surveys, um, the Wildlife Watch Group, the archaeology sessions and Stone Age skills. Um, and there'll be many different forms from hands-on delivery um, and demonstrations to talks, walks, and even helping to create maps and videos writing blogs or taking photos. Um, and of course, the practical volunteering opportunities will continue too. Um, and that can include anything from livestock checkers, wildlife monitoring, um, planting wildflower meadows, um, to helping build islands and scrapes for breeding birds, digging ponds, um, installing fences, building compost toilets as they are currently. Um, so there's a variety of skills that we'll need and ones that new and existing volunteers can develop if they're interested. Um, we also mentioned earlier that the Uni of Chester and the Museum of Liverpool are going to be training volunteers to deliver um, workshops and talks and we'll also support volunteers as well with training opportunities about wildlife, uh, about site management and water management processes at Lund um, and we can tra tailor training to each individual as well with what people are interested in. But we're not just um, not just volunteering opportunities as well, we have got job opportunities too. We have, yeah. So on top of volunteering opportunities, we'll also be hiring for the project. As already mentioned, we'll need a part-time learning officer to support all the education activities and to work with school groups. So within each of the five years of the project, we'll actually offer a structured year-long traineeship um, for people wanting to pursue a career in the environment or heritage sectors. So these traineeships will give the trainees opportunities to develop their skills in different areas of working at Lund, such as archaeological skills, water management, reserve management or public engagement. Trainees will be able to direct their learning tailored to their interests, so they will have some input themselves on how that traineeship runs. Our aim is that the trainees will have developed skills which will help them to secure permanent employment after their year with us. Uh, there will also be an overlap between trainees and old, old trainees, if you like, uh, will actually be able to mentor new trainees uh, for a short period of time as well. So Lancashire Wildlife Trust's success in previous projects, for example, the Biodiverse Society and Carbon Landscape and the Mosslands Project, um, they've all had trainees and we've had a really good record of those trainees um, going into employment afterwards. Uh, and our very own Molly Toll was a trainee as well on uh, a project. Did you enjoy your traineeship, Molly? I did, it was, um, definitely set me up. Um, you know, it was a year long placement and I'm still here nearly five years later, so it paid off. It's really good. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we hope that this has given you a general overview of the project um, and it's got you excited for it as well. Um, there really is a lot to it, so we are running three more uh, evening talks with our partners to discuss the wildlife. Um, the Sustainable Urban Drainage Scheme and Mesolithic Life. Um, the next of the, one of these is going to be on Wednesday the 10th of March with our Reserve Officer Adam um, talking about the wildlife and habitat management. Um, and you can book onto these events um, through the event section on our website. Um, on top of that, we also know that sometimes people think of questions after an event. Um, so next Friday... Um, we're also going to be hosting a green drinks event through Zoom um, for people to drop in and ask us any questions or have a chat with us about the project. Um, so that will be a bit more personal than this. You know, we'll be able to see you if you'd like us to, if you'd like to have your video um, on. You know, we are going to run these kinds of things throughout the whole of the project, but 
we would like to do them in person when we can um, but for now obviously we'll still have to stick with using zoom um so if you would like the link to join that um next friday then please do email cheryl um at c ashton at lankswt.org.uk um and we'll get you booked in fantastic well thank you so much to molly and cheryl for that whistle stop tour of all of these exciting things um, that, are, that are coming up. So um, we do have a little bit of time now for some questions, but whilst you think of those questions, um, we have another poll for you, which I will launch now. So let's get excited. Um, let us know. What are you most looking forward to? Now, we're not mind readers, so you might you might be really excited about something that is not on that list. And if so, that's fantastic. Let us know what you're excited about um, in the comments section. But um, yeah, I, I just can't wait. I'm sure I'm sure none of us can really. Fantastic. So yeah, lots of see, seeing wildlife. Yeah, yeah, we're all really into that, aren't we? Mm -hmm and events, training opportunities, learning more about London Meadows. Basically everything. <laughs> Everyone's really excited for everything. Yeah. We there know that we know the wildlife is always the most popular. Uh, it <laughs> we are the wildlife trust after all. It has to be, has to be the, the most popular thing. So um, yeah, let's spend a bit of time now. I will end it there. Thank you so much for everyone who took part. Um, and I'll share those now, but you can see, yeah, wildlife takes the lead. Um, so yeah, let's dive into questions. But I have a question. <laughs> so so I'm just I'm just gonna butt butt right in, sorry. But um my question is to, to both of you, what is your favorite um memory or, or kind of wildlife moment that's happened at Lunt Meadows? Oh my goodness. Um for me, um, it will be seeing the owls. Um, one very, very cold um, early February day, um, BBC Northwest wanted to come onto the site and they wanted to owl watch. And we kind of thought, well, yes, you can come on site, but we can't guarantee that the owls will be there. Um, and it was amazing. Two barn owls turned up, some deer turned up, the short-eared owl turned up. It was like we'd actually given them a bit of, you know, pay on the side kind of thing, just to, to turn up for the event because people got fantastic photographs of them. And they got really good footage for the television as well. Um, so it's sort of a bit of a, I suppose my experience is the fact that we really could extend that wildlife experience to lots and lots of people, you know, through that footage. And that went obviously on the television then. And yeah, our barn owls and short-eared owls at Lunt are definitely famous. Yeah, they are. Molly? Well, I was gonna say the owls, but you can't <laughs> say that as well. Sorry. So I will say, um, just before Christmas, actually, I was at Lunt, um, Locking the, gate, locking the gate at the end of the day. Um, and it was a really, really misty night. Um, and it was really cold. And I was standing in the car park and it was getting dark. And as I was stood there and it was really quiet, a woodcock flew over the top. And I had never, ever seen one before. And I had been told, when you see them, you definitely know that it's a woodcock because they're such a strange shape. And it was brilliant and I was so happy. So I'll say that one, but I always love seeing the owls and I love taking people around and them seeing the owls and seeing their reaction to it as well. Yeah, it's That's lovely. One of my favourite things. Lovely. Um, so yeah, we've had a few questions then in the chat. So Elliot asks, are there opportunities to volunteer with the universities to get involved in the archaeology side of things, which I believe you already touched on, um, and then goes on to ask, um, would there be any possibility to bring secondary students as part of a local history project? Definitely. Yes, 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 Definitely. yes, yes. 
<laughs> you just really need to contact us separate to this chat. Um, in part of the development stage, we've had a secondary school come onto the site. Um, we've had university uh -huh. groups as well come onto the site. Um, there's lots of different activities that they can become involved in. And Amy and Barry, as part of their development work in the project, they uh, bring university um, students to site. So there's always something really interesting, you know, that they can try. And yeah, we just need to chat about what they want to do, really. But yeah, that will be great. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've had another question. Um, are there any plans to expand the wetland reserve into adjoining farmland areas? <laughs> Um, this is quite current really, um, conversations are going on between different organisations in the area, they're really early conversations and I think really it has been sparked off by the recent flooding event and the flooding event um, actually 433 houses in Magull um, were actually avoided, I suppose, damage and, and water damage and things because, well, Lunt quite spectacularly burst the riverbank. Um, so it, it, it didn't happen the way it was intended, but there was a breach in the bank and obviously it's been flooded for the last month, which is what we're dealing with on site, which was what Rob was talking about the helicopters for. Um, chats are very very early and nobody knows any definitive answers of that yet but if if there's particular concerns they can always chat and you know contact us on email addresses and we'll try and find out information um, and then mark asks uh, and this is quite a ooh, loaded question uh, looking forward to training poss possibilities for mesolithic stuff any idea of time scales <laughs> <laughs> oh Mark <laughs> what do you think Molly do you want to try and answer that or do you want me to I mean really it's, it's a guessing game at the minute isn't it really um, obviously we would love to do them in person um, and if we can um, do that in the summer um, if the restrictions are all lifted then we will um, if for any reason there's a delay on that, then we'll find a way to adapt, you know, even if we have to um, do part of it online um, and through videos and filmed instructions and things like that. Um, but the Welcome Centre is expected um, in the autumn, so I would hope that we can start training volunteers in the summer. And but, I've got a question for Mark. Was it Mark that asked that question? Um, could I ask, is he interested in just taking part in the activities or is he interested in volunteering to learn to deliver the activities as well? Because there are those two differences. So, you know, you can come along and take part in the events or you can actually join in with us and join in with the project and learn to deliver those to other people. Let us know, Mark. <laughs> um, can I just say, while we're sort of on this topic, how um, commendable it is to all, all the staff working on the, the Lunt Meadows project. You know, you've not had the easiest start to this at all. You've had a, a flood, a pandemic, and probably a plague of locusts is due any day now. <laughs> um, so you've all done fantastic. You've, you've all done really fantastically well, and I suppose it is quite frustrating to 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 not be able to just go out and kind of do all these things in person as you had originally planned. Um, we do really want to go back to that. You know, as, as fun as these these calls are, we do really want to go back to to real life events. So as soon as we can do, do that safely, we, we will, please know that we will, and that that is something that we are striving towards. Um, so aware of the time now, should I just ask one, one more question? Um, Fred Frederick asks, uh, will increased accessibility include some pathways suitable for wheelchairs? So I believe we already sort of touched on that, didn't we? And yes, 
<laughs> yes, they will. And it'll be all around the reserve, is that correct? We'll start with some with certain paths that we know are particularly popular. Um, we're a little bit challenged by some of the landscaping, um, but we're certainly going to try our best to make it as accessible as possible. At the moment, there's two probably screens that we know that we can fairly easily. Um, I'm saying easily. It's always a bit complicated, but um, you know that we're going to concentrate on first. And then I think we'll have to weigh up the rest. There may be some changes to our reserve as it stands at the moment with, um, at the moment the reserve's working at quite, a, has been working at quite a low level, not its intended um, high, higher water level. Although the flood did change that quite dramatically. Um, so we might have to um, move some of the paths, which, but in doing that, it actually gives us the opportunity put, to put in different paths, wider paths, more accessible paths. So there might be more changes going on on the reserve so that we can um, hold more water, basically. So it can be a bigger flood alleviation reservoir as it is so. It's probably just worth, we've had a couple of people asking about the, the sort of the, the site at the moment. Um, and you know, can can they visit at the moment? And when when will the paths be? It's probably just worth going over that <laughs> situation. Things are drying out, definitely. Um, there's a contracted company on there at the moment. We're we're not we're, we're trying to stay off it at the moment. So Volker Stevin are um, they're they're if you're local, Volker Stevin are responsible for all the helicopter um, activity on site, and they've been filling the bund with um, huge ton bags. Um, so that work's been going on and then the pumps are now started. So the water is actually being removed from uh, Lump Meadows a little bit more. It has started to dry out. So the edges of the water where it is at the moment are receding, but the reserve's not actually open yet. Um, it will open in the next few weeks, I would suggest probably. And we've got to get this temporary repair um, completed at the moment. And then as soon as we know any opening dates or we can let people know when they can go walk along certain paths, we will do. What I would say to people though, is it's really important to stay off site at the moment because we have had um, individuals bringing family members on for walks and things, actually lifting them over barriers that are there telling them to stay away. So that's not safe. And we'd ask people just to just be patient because it will open. We want it open as soon as possible as well. And of course, you know, it's coming up to breeding season, if not started for some birds already. So we want to be able to open it up so that people can see what's happening. Um, but just, yeah, just be patient for a little while longer. It'll be on, at Molly, I would imagine you'll be putting it on Facebook, won't you, and things when... Yeah, you know, definitely. We'll be chatting um, about it being open again. Yeah, and for anyone who doesn't already follow us on Facebook, um, we've got a specific Merseyside page, um, which is Lancashire Wildlife Trust dash Merseyside. So you can follow us there and keep up to date with everything that's happening at Lund. Great, great. Well, I'll just say, yeah, thank you again to, to Molly, Molly and Cheryl. The next event is 10th of March, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, all about the wildlife at Lund. So um, do make sure to register for that and if you still have questions you know this is an ongoing discussion just email us or get in touch with us via Facebook or any other way we're always really really happy to speak to you this is not the end of questions forever um, so yeah do keep do keep this conversation going um, and thank you all so much for, for coming thank you all right thanks everyone <laughs> thank, thank you. you all right take care everyone Bye. 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 Bye.